Good morning, everyone. I'm really excited to be here today. Uh, my name is Chawin. I'm from UC Berkeley. And today I'm going to be presenting our work on, on the robustness of Deep Keener's neighbor. Uh, this is a joint work with my uh, advisor, David Wagner. So if I have to uh, summarize our work in, in one sentence, it will be uh, we find a method to generate at risk examples for uh, Keener's neighbor and Deep Keener's neighbor. So the question is, uh, why are we interested in these classifiers? Uh, first, it's because uh, nobody has really looked into uh, attacking these classifiers, and um, there's been more, more and more works, uh, especially the Deep Keener's neighbor, showing that um, these type of classifiers are potentially robust to adverse examples, and can also uh, show some possibility of detecting errors example and our, our distribution samples. So, um, uh, again, uh, these classifiers are really hard to evaluate, in fact, uh, because uh, not, they are not differentiable. So most of the uh, existing uh, attacks which rely on the gradient uh, just do not work right off the box. So. So the main goal of this work is just to come up with a good attack so we can have a good evaluation on these type of models. So uh, I'm gonna talk briefly what, about what is Keener's neighbor. Uh, Keener's neighbor is a non-parametric uh, classifier. So it, it is really simple. Uh, given an input Z in this case, and for K equal to three, basically just search for um, three nearest neighbors to the input. And each of the uh, each if the samples votes for its own class, and um, here we are particularly interested in the threat model uh, with white box and untargeted attacks with uh, an LP LP norm constraint on the adversary perturbation. And since uh, Kenya's neighbor is non-parametric, so there's no weights here. So what we mean by white box is uh, all the training samples are known to the attackers. So um, now let's talk about the attack on Keener's neighbor. We have a really simple uh, baseline, which is the mean attack. It is simply just uh, find the mean of uh, training samples of different class, and we're just going to move our input towards the mean. And then we can use binary search to determine uh, when we want to stop. Basically, we want to stop as soon as the samples misclassify. So uh, this attack obviously works, but it, it is not optimal because there might be um, different directions that we can move to and it, it is much closer. And now this leads us to our attack, which uh, the, the main idea is, is that instead of moving towards the mean of sample different class, we only want to move uh, towards some nearby groups of samples of different class. So how are we going to do that? We can actually uh, set, set this up as an optimization problem. So basically, first, we're going to use some heuristic to pick these uh, uh, m, m samples of the different class. So here, we just choose m equal to 5. Then we have the optimization problem on the bottom right, which basically just try to uh, minimize the distance between our input and all those uh, training samples that we chose. There are two two constraints. So the first one is just to um, it's just an LP norm constraint on the perturbation, and the second one is simply just to ensure that our perturbed input lies within the valid input domain. So this is actually pretty close to what we want, uh, but still not exactly. So. Why? Because um, it is actually, so we, we pick some m numbers of samples, right? But uh, what this objective function does, it is it might try to move our input cl like close to all of them, or maybe really close to some of them, but really far from some of them. But really what we really want is that uh, we just want to be um, just close enough to, to uh, some of them, actually. So how are we going to deal with this? We, can, we are going to uh, use some threshold. So, 
So think about it as like, so we said we can set some threshold of the distance from the, our input samples. And, and so, so basically we, we only want uh, samples of different class to be within, just within this threshold. And, and then we want to ignore uh, samples that are far away. And you can think of the eta or the threshold as the distance to the, the kth neighbor, basically. And, um, but again, setting this hard threshold is uh, not differentiable. So what we, are, what we are going to do is we can going to approximate this hard threshold as uh, some soft version of the threshold. And uh, here, in this case, we use a sigmoid. And um, so, so yeah, the, the optimization problem is now modified a little bit by adding the sigma and the threshold. And um, so basically what this sigma function does is that uh, when the distance is slightly larger than the threshold, it will output some number close to one. And when the distance is uh, smaller than the threshold, it will, it will output some numbers closer to zero. So this is uh, almost exactly what we want. And now it is fully differentiable. So we can go ahead and solve this optimization problem using uh, an optimizer of your choice. So um, let's take a look at uh, some of the result when we use this attack and apply it on k-nearest neighbor that use uh, cosine distance on k equal to 75 on mnist. So the first row in the table is just the, basically the clean accuracy without the attack. Uh, so k-nearest neighbor on mnist is uh, works actually works quite well, so it get uh, gets almost 96 percent. And for the mean attacks, it, it is really effective. It reduces accuracy by quite a lot. But then again, it also incurs really large uh, L2 norm perturbations. For our gradient attack, it uh, has a comparable success rate, but with uh, substantially smaller um, per norm perturbations. Um, below, we also show some. Uh, samples from the adversary examples generated by our gradient attack. As you can see, a lot of them actually, in a lot of them, the perturbation actually have semantic meanings. And what I mean by semantic meaning is uh, if you see samples that practically in the, in the red boxes, uh, for example, the first one, the clean one is zero, but then the noise is trying to make this digit looks like an eight or on the seventh, uh, the noise is trying to draw a circle, basically, so that it kind of looks like a nine. Now we move on to our second part, which is uh, attacking the deep kernel neighbor. So first, uh, deep kernel neighbor is a scheme proposed by Pepper No and Liano last year, and um, it is uh, quite simple, and it is just uh, extension of the kernel neighbor. So instead of Previously, we were doing the k nearest neighbor on the input space or the pixel space, basically for images. Now, instead, we are going to um, do the k nearest neighbor, but on the output of a neural network at all the layers. Um, so we try to illustrate this scheme on with the diagram on the right. So basically, we have a network of four layers, and then we get output its output at each layer, and then we um, when we get input, we pass it through, and then we do the near neighbor search at all of them. So for this simple case, uh, k is equal to five, so we get like five neighbors at, at each layers. So um, basically, this is this just uh, our attack on k and n. So we're gonna make some modification to it. Uh, so we are just gonna add some notion of the these uh, layers to it. So instead of the distance in the pixel space, now we have a uh, distance in the representation, representation layer, which denoted by F lambda. And now we're gonna sum up all over all the layers. So and, um, now we are just applying our attack on the uh, deep curious neighbor using the same parameter as suggested by the original paper. So deep curious neighbor actually works really well when it uh, has almost 99% accuracy on MNIST. And, um, the mean attack is also quite successful, but it has a uh, mean perturbation of 4.4. P and M attack is just the attack, uh, the baseline attack that the original work used to evaluate uh, the scheme. 
and our gradient attack is really successful. It, it, it is able to reduce the accuracy to zero with only uh, about 2.1 or 2.2 uh, mean perturbations. So now we present the same diagrams as before, but now we, we give it uh, adversarial uh, input instead. So for, for the mean attacks, as you can see, the, the neighbors in the third and the fourth layers are now being changed to the, uh, to the wrong class. On the other hand, for the, our gradient attack, actually the second and the fourth layers are actually being changed. So this just might has to do with the, the, the optimizer uh, deciding that these two layers might be easier to, to change the neighbors. Um, here are some samples generated by our attacks. Uh, and now some, some of them still do have, uh, some perturbations do still have some semantic meanings as in those in the red box, so like the seven and the zero. But now also a lot of them actually uh, actually Im imperceptible, like those in the blue boxes. So it is really difficult to see uh, perturbation in the five and threes here. So what, what does this say is that um, maybe L2 norm is definitely not, not always the, the best metric here because a lot of these samples have similar um, L2 norm perturbation but because some of them uh, has these, the, the noise in some of them has semantic meaning, so it is hard to accrue that they're actually uh, imperceptible. And th in fact, the, the fact that the perturbation has semantic meaning, this is actually uh, maybe the good news for the defenders. Um, I just want to mention briefly that uh, their deep Kinner's neighbor also output a metric called credibility score, which uh, has been shown to be able to like detect adverse examples or our, our distribution samples, at least to some degree. But we show that this scheme, while it looks promising, it, it is currently still not as effective because uh, some adverse examples can achieve really high credit score. And a lot of clean samples, in fact, have low credit scores. Um, to summarize, we propose an attack uh, to basically to generate an example for Kinner's neighbor and deep Kinner's neighbor. Um, we believe that there's some hope for the defenders and this scheme in general because the perturbation is uh, quite large and perturbation also has semantic meanings. It, it is also appear to be uh, more robust compared to other uh, classifiers right off, out of the box. Um, so we, we, we can see two ways of uh, improving the uh, DKNN. The one that we are pursuing right now is uh, we instead of using the just normal neural network, we are trying to use deep Kinner's neighbor on a more robust network sh such as the adversary train networks. And the other uh, direction is to improve the KNN itself by uh, using some more robust variants. And that's it. Thank you so much. Time for a few questions. If you can just say your name and affiliation when you start so we know who people are. Hi, this is Avienius from Brown University. Very interesting talk. So I'm wondering here, you're claiming that it requires larger perturbation and your perturbation is mounted on the L2 norm, right? Yes. Yeah, Whereas the right. K nearest neighbor classifier uses cosine distance metric. So yes. there looks like there is some discrepancy between the distance metric that is used in the classifier and the distance metric that you mm -hmm. use to evaluate how good the attack is. Mm -hmm. Do you have any comments on that? Have you tried to perturb with respect to the cosine distance metric instead? Yeah, uh, we basically using the L2 norm for to, to constrain the attack is just because it's been done for all the previous works. And I mean, we, we of, often we, we uh, a, a, a associate like imperceptibility or perceptibility with these, uh, this norm being small. Um, that's the reason there. I'm not entirely sure about uh, perceptibility versus cosine distance in this case. So I think that's the main reason. We actually also, but uh, we also try to attack um, models that use uh, Euclidean distance instead of cosine distance. So it's more aligned that way. And we, we don't see much of a difference between the two descent metrics. Yeah. Okay. That's it. Thank you. Yeah. 
Do we have other questions? Got one quickly myself. Um, so right now uh, in the presentation, you're looking mostly at uh, MNIST. Um, if you move up to a uh, sort of more feature rich mm -hmm. uh, example like CIFAR 10 or something like that, yeah. um, do you think that your attack would get uh, harder to carry out or easier to carry out? Um, we actually, uh, so the work that we're doing, we also uh, attack um, the uh, DKN, then actually maybe just uh, Kernel Saber on the representation representation layers, right? but we do this on C far ten, and our attack is really effective, and um, I'm I'm not sure if it's harder or easier compared to MNIST, but it is still worked really well. Um, you might too, uh, the hyperparameters of the attack might be quite sensitive, so it needs some fine tuning, but I think it still works really well. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right.